when I look back in, especially in my college career, but also in my adulthood of where like drugs and some of that stuff played a role in my life. And I was not someone who was like, I have these deep down, like really deep down problems. And like, you know, drugs help me suppress those emotions. Mm -hmm. um, but to some degree, like they do provide an escape, you know, mm -hmm. from, and, and that's why this is so hilarious to say, I think, but I have so much respect for sober people, like completely sober people for that reason of, man, it's so much easier to like be angry and just like go get high and watch Dave Chappelle and just yeah. fucking laugh for a couple hours. And uh, I just have so much. And, and as someone now who can't do those things because of drug testing guidelines and whatever, like living a much more sober life, I don't really drink as much as uh, for, for a lot of reasons, I don't need to like drink because of what it does to me physically. Um, and I just don't recover as well. I'm getting fucking older, dude. I drink like a couple beers and my knee fucking swells up and my fingers get swollen in the morning. It's not good. Um, but as someone who's truthfully still learning how to live completely sober, um, I've noticed that I've been like, wow, you know, I like, honestly, man, I, I, uh, I was smoked, I smoked weed my whole high school career mm -hmm. and dabbled with a lot of those things into university as well for all four years, really. And so living completely sober was like genuinely like a new concept for me. Mm -hmm. And what that meant was <clears throat> rather than I had a rough day and I'm just going to come home and like smoke a little bit and kind of like, again, you know, it became then a new thing of like, wow, I'm upset. And like, especially now, this is where it really gets amplified is being in quarantine. I don't have my girlfriend out here. I don't have my friends, family, nobody. No one I love is out here. Mm -hmm. I can't really meet friends. Like I have friends that I've actually met outside of volleyball, which is really important to have that balance. Yeah. We can't hang out. It's like irresponsible. I just have a teammate who just got COVID. Mm -hmm. And my personal opinions of COVID or whatever, that, that doesn't matter. I'm a part of a team, you know? Right. And I just think, uh, yeah, it's just been, this has been a really trying year because it's like, man, I live in the most beautiful place I've ever played. Like so many amazing things are right in front of me. And I'm to that point, like, I'm not super depressed. I have a lot of great things going on. And I'm yeah. like, I'm really happy with the trajectory, trajectory, trajectory of my life right now. Um, but dude, I still like am baffled by like having these depressed days where I'm like, man, I'm like still learning how to like handle being angry, mm -hmm. you know, or handle having like being depressed. I never truly never felt depression until this last year I had knee surgery. I tore my patella tendon. Yeah. Uh, two years ago, I played in France halfway through the season, tore my patella tendon, didn't know for six months because we never got an MRI. We thought it was tendonitis. Played through the season on a bunch of like painkillers, basically. Came back with Team USA, was like, let's give you three weeks, no jumping, ramped up, played in VNL, the Volley Nations League. Was like, dude, I still have pain, got it checked, it's torn. And now I can't go fulfill my contract in Poland. So this last year, I didn't play at all. Mm -hmm. And was the first time where I was like, here we are again. Like, there's multiple times where volleyball has been stripped away twice in the university and now again having a big injury kind of like sets you back of like oh here comes another six months of recovery and this was the right. first surgery I'd had since my shoulder surgery which was shit's crazy I think it was like 10 years ago but <laughs> but uh time flies man um but yeah I it was like the first time where I was like wow it's back to like what do I want to do with my life now mm -hmm. now it's like even more real to me you know because before it was like, oh, I could go play pro or I could go play the next level. Now it's like I've been doing that for six, seven years. This isn't going to last the rest of my life, you know? Right. And uh, that becomes really real. And it's funny how I'm, I'm back to like trying to figure it all out again. And mm -hmm. in those moments, I was, dude, I was living in Porto in Manhattan Beach. I was living on the beach. At Airbnb, I like treated myself. I was like, I'm not overseas this year. Because the year before I was in this like dark, cloudy, rainy place, the entire this place called Shamal. It never saw the sun for like four months. And as a as a boy who grew up in California and went to school in Hawaii, that's hard for me. And uh was just like came back, couldn't play volleyball, 
and was so like genuine was genuine like oh this is what people talk about when they say they're depressed and i never felt like i could relate to that because i was like what do you mean you're depressed like just there's so many ways not to be depressed there's so many great things i've had this amazing outlook on life it's because i had this purpose that was being fulfilled you know mm -hmm. and when that purpose all, the, all of a sudden gets stripped away you realize like oh shit what's next and so i tried i like took a stand-up comedy class and was like maybe i'll do stand-up comedy and, that's a fucking dark road to start going down for sure. You have years of playing like in front of like six drunk people at three in the morning for them not yeah. to laugh and talk shit. And like, dude, years of sucking. Like that, <laughs> that turned out to be like as much fun as it was to try something that was uncomfortable. Um, that's a dark road. But the point is like, I really wasn't sure. And even to this day right now, I don't know exactly what the future looks like. And where I found confidence recently is in being like, it's my whole life has always been about me. Mm -hmm. It's always been about my career and I'm going to go play college volleyball. And then I did that and got to get off the team. It's like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta make it back on the team. I get back on the team. And it's like, I'm a two time all American. Now I'm going to go play professional. And then you play in the professional world and you realize like, shit, it's a business. It's all, it's really about, it's less about the team ironically at the professional level, because mm -hmm. you, what you really want is to play super good and make a better contract on a better team. And that's the goal every year, make a better contract on a better team, on a better, in a better league. Mm -hmm. It's just the reality. And of course, like to win and stuff, you need to find a way to, to be a good teammate. And there's, that's a whole different conversation, but um, yeah, I think uh, I actually got really lost. I have no idea what I'm talking about. No, no, you're all good. <laughs> you're all good. So, uh, so there's this book um, called by, by a guy named Victor Frankel and it's man's search for meaning. And, so this guy was in Austria, Switzerland. I think that's right. So he was in Austria, Switzerland with his parents while, while the Nazi invasion was moving eastward or what would that be? Southeast? Um, so, he, so he was in Switzerland and decided to stay. He had the opportunity to leave. He decided to stay with his parents. And he went through four death camps. And before this, he was a psychiatrist. So. Throughout, throughout this experience, his pregnant wife dies, both of his parents die, and he, he was a psychiatrist before, and his, his goal was this thing called logotherapy, and logos meaning being Latin for meaning, and then the, obviously therapy. So his goal was to allow people to find meaning in life. So he was stepping away from psychoanalysis, which is the looking backwards into your life and looking at yourself currently, and his goal was to understand how we can find a place where we're moving forwards mm. and how do we have that thing that pulls us. And so that was, it, and, and from what it sounds, I, I, th I think depression is an interesting thing because I've kind of, like you said, through injury, through not knowing yourself, you kind of lose yourself and dive into this hole. Wait, and re really quick, I, stop I just wanted to, I just remember, I just want to finish my point on that long tangent. I took yeah. really quick. Mm -hmm. The point is um, I, I found so much in, um, instead of looking at what's my next thing going to be looking at how can I help the world and best serve the world right now. Mm -hmm. And that I just, just to like, end what I was trying to like, that was the full circle is that's been kind of my new mission is rather than thinking about like, what's my next career going to be, what's my next, this going to look like, um, what am I going to do with my life? Instead being like, I've spent 28 years focusing on me and my life. I've been truly like, a selfish person mm -hmm. as we all have to some degree and as i think it's okay to be it's your own life to some mm -hmm. degree you know what i mean but i've spent so much time focusing just on me and finally i've decided to kind of flip the script and focus on um just helping others and right now it's been the volleyball community and right now it's mm -hmm. been like responding to anyone who dms me or um trying to post things to inspire people to do what had a huge inspiration in my life and like really trying to give back so that was my that was my point just to not not make it like I was super depressed and I'm still super depressed. Like that's, that's yeah. what's helped me, you know, that's what kind of brought it full circle is to start thinking about like, how can I help and build community? Mm -hmm. And which is something where, you know, being in quarantine, especially now with COVID and everything, it's like, we've really lost the sense of community, I think, you yeah. know, yeah. and you don't realize again, like the, the <laughs> underlying thing with this whole conversation is like, you don't realize how much, um, how important something is until it's taken away. Right. It's so funny. I get that with injuries too. Like mm -hmm. you, you broke your Achilles or snapped your Achilles or whatever. Like you're probably like Achilles is the most important structure in the body. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, like, dude, yeah. I, I've had every injury in the books playing professional volleyball. And it's like, you break your, I broke my pinky, I broke my thumb and each finger. It's just like, literally my hand doesn't work without my pinky. Can't yeah. play volleyball because I have a broken pinky or yeah. like for a week or whatever. And you tape it together and, or like you have a back injury and you literally can't get out of bed and you're like lower back is the most important thing to focus on. And you just realize like actually the body as a whole is what's really important. But yeah. Yeah. You don't realize how much you, you really need something until it's or love something until it's taken away. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the thing. That's like the whole, the whole point of depression in a way is that when you lose that meaning, you, you kind of lose this will to, not not necessarily a will, but like you lose this huge part of yourself, and I think that's when people start to slump into depression is when they don't have, they don't have a goal for going forwards, or they don't they find that they don't have meaning, and that's kind of what Frankel talks about. So he he talks about how people found meaning, and how they actually used meaning to stay alive, and even if it were to some extent a, like a fake meaning, like uh, one guy had a son. And so his meaning in life, and, and there was a non-interference policy within the concentration camps where you couldn't, you couldn't cut someone down if they were hanging themselves. So you had to let people die if they were committing suicide. And so the only way to, to, to save people was to save them preemptively. And as a psychiatrist, it kind of falls to this guy. And so he convinces one guy to keep fighting to live because he has a son. And he convinces another guy to live because he's, he was in the middle of writing a book. And so he has to get out and finish writing this book. And, and they always knew when people would start to kill themselves because you just wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. Like there'd be one morning, everyone's getting out of bed and someone goes, nope, I'm not moving. Like, this is it. I'm going to stay here. And then they get kicked out of bed and then they have to move on and do their thing all day. And then that kind of tail spins and then they would end up committing suicide. And so his whole idea was finding this meaning that gives you something to strive for in life. And that's how you pull yourself out. And from the sounds of it, correct me if I'm wrong, obviously, but I, it, it sounds like your, your meaning is, it was this transition through, through your injury where you went from me to we. And I, I do think that people need, I do think that people need to be in some sense, um, no narcissistic. I think that that's the, the far end of that personality trait is narcissistic. And then, on the other side is completely altruistic and very agreeable, which you don't, that's not something that you want either because then you're constantly working for other people and not for yourself. And it's important to find something in the middle where I, I think it seems like for you that you're like, you, you enjoy helping people like that brings you joy in your life. And that's something that you've found meaning. So it's this, it's this transition and this, um, this weaving together of me and we where, you know, now, it's so in Oh no, go for it. No, that, that's, that's pretty much it. So now I think that you've, you've hit this point where you're like, okay, meaning in life doesn't just come from an internal. I can find that elsewhere by helping other people. And that's actually something that Frankel talks about in one of his lectures is he gets everyone to write down on a piece of paper, what's meaning in life. And everyone writes it down. And he asks one of his students, what did, you, what did you put? And she says, finding meaning in life is helping other people to find meaning in life. And in that way, you're bringing a community with you. That's really cool, dude. And, and this, just because I've had this conversation recently, actually, um, made me think about like that's this is my my thing with religion where it's like man I, I really wish I was religious sometimes mm -hmm. you know be and, and to be honest like I've as someone who's not religious and as someone who grew up in a Christian home like you already know that I went through like my young university years of like trying to convince my parents basically that God isn't real the stories aren't true like yeah. I've been through all of that and finally got to this spot of like it's what puts you at peace and and now it's like even though I um and this doesn't need to be a religious talk but like I'm not a religious guy but I see so much beauty in in different religions mm -hmm. in the fact that they they create this blueprint and structure for living a good life like mm -hmm. take the bible not as these are all true actual facts and take them as stories that have meaning there's so much meaning in books like the bible mm -hmm. and I just think it's, I've always been like, damn, dude, I just wish I could be like, could, like, I wish, you know, I wish I could be the kind of guy that could just be convinced by a religion because I think the beautiful part is it gives humans a sense of meaning, which we all know is purposeful. You know, mm -hmm. it is something that we need to exist. Um, it's something that I think is hardwired, like deep into our body, into our souls. And so 
um i think for so long i've been like man i wish like people <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to make this like a talk about religion. No, 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 dude. I do, hey, wherever I, you want to take it. Like I'm like, I, I, no, I just I, think that there's for people out there who um, aren't religious. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's a lot harder to find that meaning mm -hmm. and doesn't make one uh, more worth pursuing than the other. But I will say there's something about um, people who have chosen a religion where it's like that, that part's, like I look at my parents where it's like they believe in, you know, eternal life and that, that kind of thing. And, and I think like, man, how fucking sick to wake up every day and just be like, all good. I'm gonna live for, a, I'm fucking live forever. You know, yeah. like there's how, how beautiful, like mm -hmm. your sense of purpose is like spread the word of God or whatever it is through whatever medium you do that, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that is so important. And so for people who don't have a religion, I think navigating that there's no, there is no blueprint, mm -hmm. you know? And I just think it's such an interesting thing to talk about because it's like, on one hand, religion provides this like amazing structure for being like a good human being. And mm -hmm. all, the, all the different religions in the world, whether it's even through like Greek mythology and everything, they preach similar meanings and stories. Don't be grateful, lustful, like all these similar ideas right. that I think just make you a good human being and trying to navigate that without picking one box to live in or or whatever you know and um i just think can be really difficult for a lot of people and mm -hmm. so to that point i don't i don't have that so for me searching for that moral ground searching for that that meaning has been tricky um and ironically it's the similar message you know i'm gonna help thy neighbor or whatever the mm -hmm. quote is yeah. you know like i'm i'm and that's kind of where i've flipped it now is it's like I'm okay not having all the answers, you know? And I've been spending a lot of time trying to listen more to um, the world around me and, and, and listen more to like, what is making me happy? It's not just volleyball. Like what about it, like the pro along the way, like what things do, or do make me really feel fulfilled? And for a long time I was like, well, smoking weed makes me feel good or doing this makes me feel good. Like going out and hanging out with friends and partying a little bit makes me feel good. And as I've gotten older, it's been like, dude, if I, like post some like workout thing on Instagram and some club team or whatever, they start doing the warm up or one of the kids reaches out to me and they're like, dude, I, I love your videos. You've been so inspiring, whatever. Like, can you help me? I had a shoulder thing and like, I get to help some kid. I'll send, I send voice messages to everyone because I'm a terrible typer. Um, it just takes too long for me. And I like mm -hmm. to talk. And I've just found recently, like, it's so fulfilling to be like, wow, I can help some kid in Thailand mm -hmm. or I have this kid who reaches out to me from uh, Tanzania and like just people like that where it's like, wow, I never would have thought that you could impact someone's life from across the world. I never thought that like my social media presence really meant anything more than like, you know, I just want to joke around and fuck around about the world around me and express myself like that. And yeah. now it's been like, wow, I can actually like help change lives and do something good. And even having just that has given me enough feeling of like, okay, I, maybe I don't want to be a coach. Like, I don't want to coach a, a club team or yeah. like, you know, it's like the very typical thing to do is play professionally or play in the university and then totally. go be a coach. And I was like, I got to do something extra unique or, yeah. you know, extra me and whatever. Um, but all that now it's like, I don't look at it like that anymore at all. It's, I look at it now like, okay, how can I use who I am? Like authentically be myself and tell my story. And, and if people are attracted to that, like how can I give back to that community of people? Mm -hmm. And it's just been like such a, a powerful experience. Um, like I hate to say Instagram has been a powerful experience, but that's like my mode of, of transportation here, you know, of transferring my message or, or trying to connect or give back to the community. And I just can't believe what an impact it's had already on people's lives, but also my own, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in my search for my continued search for meaning, you know, and I think like that's been my biggest lesson is like, finding ways to give back. And so when I feel depressed or angry or whatever, it's like, how can I try to funnel that into finding real meaning and make it, if I know this thing makes me feel really fulfilled, like re reach out to someone who reached out to you before mm -hmm. or check in with people you love or like those things just make such a big difference that, you know, a younger version of me like couldn't navigate, you know, there's so many easier, uh, effort, more effortless methods of,